Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another repair video. This time I have a, um, a Game Boy Advance SP that's in need of a little bit of uh, LCD repair. So this was sent in by um, subscriber Christy and um, she noted that her LCD is shattered. <laughs> it's actually cracked. I did charge up the battery. Um, everything else seems to work. It does play games, but you can see distinctly large portion of the LCD doesn't work at all and um, so I've already done similar types of repairs swapping out LCDs and whatnot so I'm gonna pretty much um, speed through all the portions I've already shown before um, and I'm gonna show you specifically once we get up to actually swapping out the LCD and um, at the end of the video I'll show you guys um, Christy has said it's okay if I uh, take apart the old LCD and show you guys all the different layers and how it works so definitely look forward to that. Anyway, let's just get into this. Uh, so let's open this guy up first. Okay, so we're in like Flynn, so to speak. Um, everything looks okay on the board. It's uh, nice and clean. Uh, one thing that I did notice and I'm going to uh, suggest to Christy is uh, start looking into getting a new battery. This one's starting to swell. Uh, it will probably be fine, but you really don't want to continue using batteries that are swollen. Uh, basically, as batteries age, um, lithium type batteries, they actually release as you charge them, they release a little bit of hydrogen, I believe it is. And um, usually it's not much of an issue um, if the battery is vented, but uh, basically this is like a steel container for this, so it's just building up pressure. So you just don't want a battery to explode. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, um, I have a lot of old batteries like this. They sell replacement ones off eBay, so I would suggest look look into getting a new battery anyway because once it gets to this point, it's probably down to like maybe 60% its capacity. So anyway, so we're just going to open this. This is the replacement LCD, and they packed it pretty nicely, actually. Um, and I can tell um, this guy was actually a used pole. And luckily, though, they did include a nice, I believe this is, glass actually the way that it um it clicks it definitely feels like glass so that's definitely a nice touch but first we're gonna have to get this guy off first and you can see there they put a little sticker saying that they tested this anyway to remove the old uh, lens guard you actually just go on the corner and you just start peeling it up there's a double-sided adhesive tape you want to leave the adhesive on the LCD Okay, the old one came right off, and this is nice and clean, so we're going to keep it that way. So, what we are going to do is pull off the protective film here. There we go. So now we're down to the bare glass, and we are going to very carefully align this. Now, because this is glass, um, once we put this down, it's going to be hard to get back off because we can't flex it like we did with the original plastic lens. So really try your best to uh, get that alignment before you stick it down all the way. That looks pretty good to me. So just press it down lightly, and we're good to go. Going to leave this plastic on until we actually put it into the shell. Uh, just as a quick test, we can actually go through and plug it in, stick the battery in, and make sure that the LCD works. Okay. And the LCD works. Looks beautiful. Step, set everything aside, open up this top portion and swap out the old broken LCD for the new one.
Okay, and here we are. We're all done. Gave it a bit of a clean. It was a bit grimy inside. Not too bad, actually. I did notice that there was some what appeared to be soda um, that spilled a little bit. It didn't actually get into the bay itself. It was just in the grooves here. So I cleaned that off. And this is a Q-tip from that. That's, yeah. I just got to be careful if you're going to be drinking soda not to get it inside the game console. Anyway, we can uh, turn this guy on. Volume's nice and loud. Uh, circuit works perfectly. Um, backlight turns on, or rather front light turns on and off. And um, no graphical weird stuff going on. So let's grab a game and uh, plop it in, see if it works. Okay, so this is the first game I ever bought. And I bought this when I was probably like 15, 14 or 15. And we're just going to use this to test. The... Um, Logo comes up, so it's reading the cart. Yep, lights up just fine. Let's just uh, play a little bit to make sure all the buttons work. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so everything works <laughs> as I uh, play a game that I haven't played in ages. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah. pretty fun game. Anyway, uh, yeah, everything's working. The screen fully works, audio, all the buttons. So yeah, I'm going to send this back to uh, Christy and thank her for, um, for uh, sending this unit in for repair uh, so that I can make a video on it. But uh, before I forget, let's actually tear down the... Uh, the original LCD and see exactly what's inside. Okay, so here's the original LCD. Um, actually, which way? Okay, yeah. Um, it's easiest if you want to tear this down. Um, there are little metal clasps here. You can uh, very carefully get in there with some sort of pocket knife. Um, undo them and then pull the screen out from the back. These two uh, connections here for the front light, they're um, soldered uh, to a very thin flex that goes over to the front, hence front light. So, just going to get in here and very carefully start levering the LCD out. You can see one corner's out and then it popped back in. Great. There we go. Let's get our finger in there so it can't do that again. Once you get all the sides done, uh, you don't want to pull it entirely off because that little ribbon cable for the front light is still in there. You can see the uh, front light still looks okay, so um, I can actually salvage that and uh, use that for a display with a broken front light, but okay LCD glass. Here you can see though, wow, all that black stuff is basically the liquid crystal. Well, when it cracks, uh, the liquid crystal starts leaking out. And so it turns dark. It's normally supposed to be white, obviously. But yeah, um, what I'm going to do is uh, desolder this. Um, carefully, I'll do that on my own time now. But anyway, yeah, um, on this unit itself, there's no uh, diffuser, light diffuser box or anything on the backside because this is a front light. So if I were to light this up, you would be able to see... Okay, so you can see I removed the, um, let me just turn off my iron. I removed the backlight, just put a little bit of solder on it and very carefully uh, lift it up with some tweezers. Um, so right now it's currently disconnected. You could see the original pads here that it was soldered to the other flex cable. It might be a 12 volt string or a 9 volt. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, yeah, without me grabbing like a regulated power supply or something to safely do this without burning out the backlight, I'm not going to be able to easily power this. So the way that this works is um, there's actually a string at the bottom. So it's a piece of like clear plastic um, that's underneath this lens. And there's a flex cable that runs along all the, the whole bottom. And if I were to take this apart, it would destroy the uh, the front light, unfortunately, so I'd rather not do that. But there's a string of white LEDs along the bottom, and there's probably either three or four of them. 
Um, and the Game Boy it has to boost up the voltage to probably about like 12 volts or something to drive them uh, all at once. So basically, it's just a lot of LEDs along the bottom. It shines light upwards. And then there's a bunch of, if you've ever looked very closely, there's a bunch of horizontal lines all through the, um, the front light. And so when the light hits that um, perpendicular, it actually gets scattered to the back there. So then it goes back, bounces off the screen, and then comes through the front. And that's how you get, you know, your front light, basically. So, uh, all in all, I'm just going to put this here just to protect it a little bit. Uh, other than that, we have our LCD itself, which is um, a... Actually, yeah, this is a just a purely reflective one, actually. It's not even transflective. Um, and you can see the way that this is constructed is... The uh, ribbon cable is bonded directly to the glass, um, and this is the bond itself. And there are two chips here, here and here, and then there's one uh, vertically along here. And what these chips do is um, this chip is responsible for half of the display, and this chip is responsible for this half, and this chip is responsible for the horizontal. So this is vertical, vertical, horizontal, and so it's basically a matrix of... Um, of drivers and then where they intersect is the pixels that they actually control so this is actually very common uh, display uh, topology for uh, kind of high resolution high density displays um, unfortunately though you can see if you get a kink in your wire if um, one of the traces near the end start ripping and um, you get damn any kind of damage you can't easily replace this you would need actually a hot bar attachment to, um, to basically remove the ribbon cable and then put a new one in. So unfortunately, it's just not feasible to do that. Now, this LCD, even though it's um, cracked, there is still, like, you could actually still see some of the image data on the, um, the LCD itself. So I'll probably keep this actually as a test LCD. Um, so, you know, nothing really ever gets wasted. Um, within this hobby. And this front light, like I said, could be useful for if you want to front light a Game Boy Color or if you're fixing another uh, Game Boy Advance SP with a uh, broken front light uh, because these do eventually burn out if you use them long enough. Anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and um, I'm going to get this guy back to uh, Christy. I'll uh, send this in the mail as soon as I can. I'm going to actually probably sit here and test it for just a little while longer to make sure that you know the connection's okay and over time it's not going to fail again but yeah definitely um hopefully christy is watching right now um i would advise getting a new battery your your battery looks like it's towards the end of its life and you definitely don't want it to swell to the point where it damages anything if it pushes and breaks the plastic or even worse if it starts leaking um so you're going to want to be really careful and um probably get a new battery just while you're at it. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.